Hello everyone, my name is Dennis, and in uh, part two of our little series uh, where we have uh, figured out that we definitely have an issue with our CV joint is the uh, process of removing it and uh, figuring out uh, what went wrong, because uh, as you'll see, there's nothing wrong with the boot, and this car has about 100,000 kilometers, so 60,000 miles, so a little early for a CV joint to be failing. Uh, in the case of this uh, EV, this Nissan LEAF, the CV joints are the same as any ICE car. Um, in fact, most of the suspension, the brakes, it's all pretty much familiar stuff if you worked on cars, like I have for a few years. So what we're gonna do is disassemble everything here and uh, we'll do a little post-mortem on uh, why this joint failed. So uh, hang tight and we'll uh, take this thing apart. One of my top tips for uh, taking care of your nuts is uh, these uh, magnetic trays here behind me. Uh, I've got a bunch of them. So basically uh, all the metal parts will take off and we'll keep them secure here in an order. And uh, that just makes it easy, uh, especially if you're like me and you forget where things went, um, to make sure you've got all the bolts and nuts uh, and also make sure that you've got nothing left on there when you're done. So let's get on with this job. All right, so um, what we're going to need to do to get access underneath here is just remove the front aero panel, which isn't a big deal. Um, this little clip or um, clip remover is a very handy tool to have. Um, there's some bolts here, but there's also some of these plastic clips, and I should have some of them right here. You can actually, if you're going to do this, uh, especially if you're doing, in my case, I've done some corrosion work on this car. Um, I needed to remove all of these panels. Um, so having this tool in hand is a good thing. And then you can order up these clips. Um, I'll put a link in the, uh, description, but the, uh, QGZ054 seems to be the clip for these, uh, leaves anyway. Um, get a big bag of them and cause you'll break a bunch, putting them, uh, pulling them off and this, uh, takes some stress out. They're not expensive. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, pull this thing apart. And you'll see, you just pull the top of the pin out and out she comes, pretty easy. These have all been replaced, but I will tell you that when I first did this, uh, the factory clips uh, ended up breaking a bunch of them. So it's a good idea to have the clips in hand. Like I said, there's some, uh, I believe they're 10 or 12 millimeter bolts. We'll take those off and uh, drop this piece down. During the disassembly process, this is a steak nut, some of these have a cotter pin and a castellated nut, which quite frankly is a little easier to deal with. This vehicle had probably been uh, serviced by the dealer at some point, so this nut actually was already staked. So we're just using uh, basically a round chisel um, to basically drive this out so we don't toast the threads. Again, normally you wouldn't have to worry about this because uh, if you're replacing the wheel bearing and the shaft because you're gonna be, uh, sorry, normally you wouldn't have to worry about this if you're replacing the CV joint and the nut because if you wreck the threads, who cares? You're gonna be putting a new one on. In this case, I am replacing all these bits, but I am just doing this for demonstration purposes. Uh, it's not really a good idea to try and take this apart without um, staking this properly like this. Why you ask? Well, you said, you know, make a mess of the threads. You can also take an existing chisel and it's probably better actually to have a rectangular one that you've actually filed down. And there are a few special tools for this, but this is probably close enough for our purposes. So we'll go ahead and uh, spin this big guy off. I think it is 36 mil, but uh, we'll try it out. With regard to spinning this off, if this uh, vehicle, uh, I happen to know that it's only got about uh, 90 foot pounds of torque on it right now. Um, it's a pretty good idea to take the wheel off, pop the center cap off, so you have access to this nut and do this with the wheel on the ground. There are different tools that you can use to hold this, but quite frankly, uh, we're gonna see, this is a generation three, uh, third generation wheel bearing in here. Um, so you could actually put it down on the ground without this nut on. Um, it's not gonna damage the bearing. So um, I'm gonna spin this off right now with the vehicle in park. If this has a lot of torque on it, um, I would not do this. I would suggest you uh, pop the cap off and just lower it to the ground so the tire is touching. 
uh, got some weight on it, and then used the tire itself. Uh, Nissan has a tool that uh, bridges a couple of these studs, um, and it does it in a way that doesn't damage these. Uh, so we might try that. You can see some people using breaker bars on here to tighten them. These aren't put on with a ton of torque. Um, with the Nissans, it's going to be around 130 foot-pounds. With a 2018, they're specking uh, nine or 89 foot-pounds, which I think is actually too low. We'll talk about that later. But um, I happen to know, because I've had this off, it doesn't have a lot of torque on it, so it's going to spin off real easy. Um, you'll see that in just a sec here. Um, so I'm not going to secure this in any way. I'm just going to back it off with the, uh, with the impact. So this uh, particular socket, um, obviously I bought one in the past for some service. It's 32 millimeters um, or inch and a quarter um, to take this particular nut off. Uh, and again, it's a 2018 leaf we're talking about. It should come off uh, without uh, too much complaint with impact here. So let's try that out, see what we get. And it's right off. And you notice there's no washer, um, just the nut. This nut is supposed to be replaced when you take it off. Um, so I would suggest you do that. You can see how these threads, um, even in that stake business there, have been damaged a bit. So you have to be really careful. Uh, again, not too worried here because I, uh, I will be replacing the shaft and the bearing. Okay, so I have taken off this uh, brake caliper, which is now um, bungeed out of the way up top. Um, the brake rotor is removed. And because I am also replacing this wheel bearing, why? Because this car's got a um, 100,000 kilometers on it and I have to do this work. And I figured, well, the bearings aren't terribly expensive as an assembly. The, probably the worst part of this job, honestly, is gonna be this uh, ABS speed sensor. I've taken the bolt out here but this piece has to be removed and it is kind of stuck in there. Uh, of course, if you break this, now you're into a fairly expensive repair. Uh, so as far as the wheel bearing side of the things goes, um, that's a trick. You wouldn't have to do this for the CV joint, but uh, that will be a challenge. Let's see how we do. So I figured I'd jump in here real quick um, and talk about, um, whether or not you have to take the lower ball joint off to take the axle. As you can see here, I took the steering knuckle off, which is pretty much removed this nut. I've got the socket on there, but you can just uh, loosen this off and then using the socket to bear down, instead of hammering on the nut, put the socket on there, back this off a bit, give it a few taps and it'll drop right out of the knuckle here. Uh, and then uh, you can see I've been able to extract this uh, CV axle without taking the lower ball joint off. If you take this off, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna have to replace it. Um, so you could just make that part of this job. Um, maybe I should have, but uh, in this case, just checking this joint for play. Actually, There is a bit of play, so um, guess what? I'll be replacing this one anyway. Um, you can see it's kind of loose in there. And then if I grab the lower ball or the lower uh, A-arm here, I don't know if you can hear that, but I'm actually moving this ball joint up and down here. So yeah, at 100,000 kilometers, guess what? New ball joint, so we're gonna have to pop that off as well. Yay. Okay, so one of our challenges today, when we remove the shaft, this is the area here uh, where we're gonna remove from the uh, transmission. And because this is, uh, shaft is, or there, all of these cars have asymmetric, so different like drive shafts, there's also a bearing carrier right here. And I already know that this bearing, uh, it's aluminum housing and the bearing will certainly be stuck in there. So we're gonna have to deal with that. And then this portion uh, will, You'll see when we get this thing apart, um, but I already know that's gonna be a bit of a struggle. So uh, now with the arrow uh, shield removed, we can get easy access. Normally this area would be covered. So we are good to go to uh, continue on. We're gonna do a little um, catch up here because you can see there's been some carnage. Um, first of all, the lower ball joint has been removed and we'll talk about how that, uh, 
happens. Um, it's pressed in basically. So based, I've got a tool, uh, a lower ball joint press that uh, makes this a fairly easy job. And if we look down the pipe here, you can see right here is that is the bearing carrier. And then behind it is the uh, where the axle uh, inserts into the uh, reduction gear gear case. So basically you can also see I've removed the strut and I removed the strut, it's just three bolts up here, um, but I removed them um, to make it easier to access with the slide hammer, which uh, we'll talk about in a second. I've got some things taken apart on the table and uh, it, it also requires taking away, there's a, a sway bar link, it's the bottom of it's right here. Um, it just bolts onto the strut. The strut itself, it's three bolts basically. It's pretty straightforward. Um, really not a video required, but you can see I've kind of made some room here um, so I can get to everything. And let's go to the table now and we'll have a look at a few of these bits and pieces. So here's a quick note on the ball joint, um, which I've cleaned up here. And you can see it's, uh, I get an idea there, but it, it has a bunch of play. It's clearly, I've cleaned this, the grease out of it, but it, it basically has a lot of play. Um, so this tells you that for sure, this is a part that needed to be replaced. Uh, and this gets pressed in to the lower ball joint. Um, and you basically use a, a press like uh, this device. This kind of goes over. It's a big C clamp essentially. But the way that goes is like this. That kind of goes up here. You've got your uh, lower ball or your lower A arm coming out. And typically what you'll do then is you'll throw a cup that'll fit, right? So that's pressing on the lower control arm. This guy goes here. And, and basically what this does is it allows you to press, it allows you to press this out. Basically as you tighten the clamp, it pulls down on this into the cup and drops it out of the lower. Uh, you can see where the A arm was there. So this, uh, press, this uh, ball joint press is not an, uh, it's not a, actually a very expensive tool. It's a good one to have in your shop if you're going to be doing this kind of work. But we'll just move this out of the way and uh, we'll look at, uh, this is a, uh, or we'll look at what I'm using for a replacement for a ball joint. Just a quick one. I do like these Mevotex. Um, basically that's the part number for the Nissan Leaf. It's MS30503. Um, and these are a little bit nicer than the OEM in my opinion. Why? Because they have, uh, oh, here. because they're greasable. And it comes with, I'll just open this up real quick. You got a new joint. Obviously that's the boot. Um, a little bit nicer. It has a C-clip up here, which the OEM one did not have, um, which prevents this from falling through. So there's, I imagine this OEM one probably had like a, uh, some kind of a clip, which is rusted away. If we look in our little kit of goodies here from Mevotech, again, you gotta be, uh, of course I have a knife sitting right over there, but it comes with a clip. Uh, it'll go right here to retain this once it's pressed on. New bolt. And the big thing, for me anyway, is that it comes with a grease cirque. This little part here, it's called a Zerk grease nipple. So once you've installed the joint, you can screw this on and uh, grease it. Uh, so it becomes a periodic maintenance item, probably extends the life of it a fair bit, um, my opinion. Uh, so I do like using these, um, quite frankly, over the OEM ones. And they're probably almost certainly less expensive as well. I think you're talking about uh, $30 Canadian for this piece. Um, so quite reasonable. So let's go, uh, let's go now. Um, oh, and I should mention too, um, this normally is sitting in the knuckle, which is sitting in this position. Um, the strut goes here. This is normally inserted here. And of course it's going to be in this case, kind of rusted and hard to get out. Uh, so I keep one of these pickle forks, and essentially you just drive this in between. Um, you can do this on the car without removing all of this, but it's just nice to see it. 
this gets in here and pries this piece off and then you can just knock it out. So the pickle fork and that press are tools that you're probably gonna need uh, if you wanna just do this lower ball joint, uh, if you're doing it as a separate job. So let's go on with a little post-mortem on our CV joint failure. I just wanted to talk about uh, the CV joint now that we have it out. Um, in the video before I showed you where this uh, carrier uh, bearing was sitting inside. And this is a tool, uh, it's basically a slide hammer. I can throw a link up in the description. Um, and it slides in here and basically I really had to uh, be quite aggressive with this to remove this, to get this bearing out of its carrier. You can see there's a bit of corrosion there. Um, I, I used some heat on carefully on the aluminum housing and then I frankly pulled it hard. Um, now one of the things you could do is remove the bearing carrier, it's about six bolts and take the whole assembly out. Obviously you didn't have to press this out. This did work, but I had to remove the strut, which is sort of sitting right here in the way. And, um, and then basically heat, penetrating fluid on the housing, and then basically go to town with this thing. Uh, and I mean aggressively hard and it did pop out. So that was great. Um, but onto the, uh, the joint itself now, um, one of the big issues is this clamp. So this boot basically is sitting in this position and this clamp is around it. And I could basically move this whole thing around. And one of the issues, or the big issue with this joint probably and why it failed is because this clamp, which typically this clamp is around here and this piece is slid on here, you should not be able to like move this joint with this clamp on here. You shouldn't be able to slide or move this around. And quite frankly, on both sides, I'm able to do that. I'm able to basically slide this thing up and down. This side was tight. Um, this side would normally be right here. Um, this was fine. This was the issue. And what probably happened over, the, it's only six years old, is water had run down in salt water. You can see there's still some in there. I dumped most of it out, but there's water in there and it uh, definitely made itself uh, known. Um, now, normally this piece is going to be here and I won't try to, actually, maybe we can get this on. This piece is going to be in here and all these bits are going to be in here. Um, and there's a little ring that uh, was a challenge. It sits in this position here in this slot and kind of sticks out. And normally um, you can also see there's a little groove that that sits in, um, in the proper position. And I'm not gonna lie, that was not easy to remove. I had to basically hammer this off with a lot of force. Um, and it kind of speaks to, do you know, do you wanna be servicing these joints? In this case, with the 2018 Leaf, you have to buy the whole assembly. You're not going to be taking this apart. Um, now, it's an expensive part, but once the aftermarket gets it, you know, for a couple hundred bucks, you'd be kind of crazy, in my opinion, to try and service any of this. Um, this bearing, too. Now, maybe because I pounded it out, but if you can see that, but it's got some play in it. It's moving back and forth. Uh, and normally, with a bearing like this, you don't want to be seeing you, you don't want to be seeing any play. So this cage. Uh, is showing evidence of uh, unusual wear. There's like a, a detent, of, uh, and I have uh, higher res pictures of these that you can see, but it's showing some pretty extreme wear. Uh, this has rust on it. So this piece, which would normally be sitting on here, was obviously exposed to water in the boot, and you can see what's happened here, it's rusted. These are supposed to be shiny and smooth. They are not, they're pitted. Um, and then this piece, which again, normally would be sitting out here, is uh, where the bearings, these bearings will be rolling around. It's kind of the scenario here. This goes here, that fits in there. Um, not too hard to take these apart. Um, basically, if you get them in the right spot, you can sort of, uh, see, so get them in the right spot exactly and you can rotate them back in to assemble these bits. That's another video. But these are supposed to be rolling around in here and if you look closely, there are obvious wear tracks. So this joint was fine uh, if it was spinning straight, but the minute it tried to turn and rotate, all these wear marks are why you're getting that clicking and uh, pitting sound. So now that we've uh, looked at the assembly, we can start putting everything back together. I, I should mention, I have here in my hands the wheel bearing. Um, so this is normally uh, what your axle shaft is fitting through. And uh, uh, what your actual spline is fitting through, rather, this guy is going through here. 
and that's hooking up there. And we're going to talk about uh, the issues that we're seeing with the click, uh, uh, perceived click when you accelerate or decelerate. The wheel bearing is actually okay. Unfortunately, in taking this apart, there's an ABS wheel sensor that comes through and rides, kind of reads this ring here. And that sensor sticks through the hub, which I have here. The sensor, uh, so normally this is sitting in this position. The ABS wheel sensor uh, detecting the wheel speed kind of goes through, pokes through here, and it rides in this ridge. So normally with this, sorry, bolted together, uh, you can see the EBS well sensor is kind of hidden in there. And unfortunately, even though it was plastic, it was seized in this hole. Uh, the rust had just grabbed it so tight that I broke it, taking it off. That's a $400 dealer part. I found some Amazons. Hopefully they work. So it was kind of a frustrating day getting all these bits apart. So fast forward uh, a week, I had to wait for a TPMS, or I keep calling it a TPS. It's an ABS wheel sensor, as you can see. I pretty much broke it off, removing it to get this... Uh, steering knuckle and wheel bearing hub assembly out. But you can see I've got the new shaft in um, and it went in surprisingly easy. So the, the bearing that was a real beast to remove, um, which is hiding way back here, um, is uh, in place and uh, it just required a quick tap. I was actually afraid I was gonna have to really struggle with this axle to get it into the bearing retainer. It turned out to be uh, not a problem at all. So I've got the strut back in. Um, I've got the ABS wheel sensor in, so we can start putting everything back together. Now, I'll refer to the photo that I took um, previously, but the retainer plate, which is hiding way back here, there you can see the top bolt. Not sure if you can see that there, but here and here, there's two bolts. Those are uh, torqued to 18 foot-pounds and uh, basically installed. There's a notch in that plate. The notch has to be pointing up, and uh, you just put that back in, and that is what is retaining this axle from pulling out. Um, on the other side, there's a little spring pin on the end of the axle, which is, requires that you just give the axle a good shove. Uh, but I've also, on the driver's side, because this clamp, uh, this inboard clamp here was loose, I also uh, pulled the, uh, the boot back on the other side, uh, could not knock this off, uh, and I was afraid of damaging the joint. So um, I used the existing boot, slid it back, cleaned the living daylights out of this in my parts cleaner, uh, blew it out with the compressed air and then put a new pack of grease on the other side, new clamps. So hopefully the driver's side will last now um, a lot longer uh, with good grease and sealed properly from the elements. So while we're in here, um, I've got my little cheat sheet for torques. Um, so we'll kind of go over those. This stabilizer bar that goes to the strut here, um, that's going to be, that nut is going to be at uh, 62 foot-pounds. The strut bolts here, or nut and the bolt. Um, they're not adjustable, as I thought earlier. You can buy adjustable um, replacement bolts that would give you a little bit, I think it's about four degrees. These are at uh, 122 foot-pounds. The brake um, assembly or the, the caliper carrier bolts are going to be at uh, 122 foot-pounds. Um, on the steering knuckle, the bolt that uh, secures this ball joint will be at 28 foot-pounds. And uh, caliper slide bolts, 20 foot-pounds. I didn't take those apart. Uh, the sensor, the ABS wheel sensor, this little um, bolt that goes in there is just at 7.8 foot-pounds or 89 inch-pounds. Uh, tie rod end uh, will be at 25 foot-pounds. And I had mentioned earlier the retainer plate down there on the axle was 18 foot-pounds. Axle nut. The axle nut spec for a 2018 is 96 foot-pounds. But then for the same wheel assembly uh, bearing, uh, which is in the 2019, the STC bearing rating, and I believe the factory manual is 134. I will be torquing this to 134. Um, all the parts are the same. I don't see any reason why I would use 96 when 134 is the current spec for, again, a car with all identical uh, axle wheel bearings, TPMS, or I keep calling it TPNS, ABS wheel sensor, everything. So I don't see any reason to keep this at 96. I'm going to take it to 134. Okay, well, fast forward through... Um, we've got everything together. Um, we did go over the torque specs. Good news is the ABS wheel sensors from Amazon work great. No errors. I've had the car on the road now for about a week or so. I just uh, jumped in to put in these adjustable camber bolts because I did not realize when I first took the car apart, the camber on, the, uh, on these cars is not adjustable. Uh, from the factory, um, you just got a straight bolt 
and there's no flange. This is the bolt that I just took out. So I put in uh, one of these Moog um, camber adjustment kits, if you like. Yeah, you need one per side. Um, uh, they're probably about 20, 25 bucks each. And there's a little cam here. Um, so it replaces the bolt and gives you some adjustment as you turn this in the car, it actually pushes this section in and out. So now that I've got the new drive shaft in, which works great, it's nice and quiet, uh, the new ball joint and the new wheel bearings, um, we're good to go. You can see here, um, I've put on a new nut and I've staked it, um, which uh, keeps this from moving. And I've torqued this to uh, about 128 foot pounds, which is not the spec for the 2018, it's the spec for the 2019. But again, on researching all this, I found out that the hub, the bearing, even the knuckle, they're all exactly the same part, including the drive shaft. So I don't see any reason to go with um, the lower torque in this case. Um, and we've talked about that enough, I think, in the video. So everything's torqued to spec, everything's working great, the car's back together, and it's uh, quiet as a mouse once again. So the final, um, the outcome here, the steering wheel is just maybe, when I put everything back together, the steering wheel was maybe about a degree off. And I'm kind of AR about that. I also want to get the toe checked because I've replaced caught in lots of components. So the toe out would be, you know, are the tires kind of pointing in towards each other or out? And the camber, which this allows me to adjust, is whether they're leaning uh, in or out at the top or bottom. Right now, having measured this uh, with just one of my home tools, I know that the car is sitting at about two degrees negative, and I'm pretty sure the spec is probably around zero to one. Um, so this, uh, putting this bolt in will let them fine tune that and get the car perfect uh, for hopefully another 100,000 kilometers or more. Um, so there you go. Uh, we've replaced the drive shaft and done a bunch of other work. Uh, we've talked about axle click, um, gone over a bunch of torques, uh, and more importantly, got the car back on the road running great. So uh, if you did find this video helpful, a like and subscribe would be awesome. And uh, I hope you found this all helpful. Cheers.